Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today's video, I'm gonna go through this IBU, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, self-assessment math test in this book. Uh, I'm gonna go over 14 problems, the first half of the self-assessment. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the description. And what I'd recommend is you do the problems first and then watch how I do them. Just to kind of figure out where you are with your math skills for the IBU entrance exam. Measure the height. Yeah, no, measure the width from here to here. Laminated overnight on the CNC. This is an IBU test prep book put out by Complete Test Preparation in Canada. Um, it's for the International Brotherhood of electrical workers and it's a steady guide and practice test i'll also put links to this in the description and where i am right now is i'm under the math self-assessment test in here and i printed it out right here and i'm going to run through it okay before you get started just a couple uh, testing strategies one is in a multiple choice test you always want to eliminate answers that don't make any sense or that you know won't work and that'll increase your probability if you had a guess on which one was right the second pointer on test taking, standardized math test taking, is mark up the exam as much as you can. Uh, really circle or put boxes around the important things so you don't make any careless mistakes. Write out as much work as you can on the test or on a separate piece of paper if you're testing on a computer. That way, um, if you go back to the problem while your work is there, you're less likely to make careless mistakes if you've written it out. And most importantly, your mind is really image oriented. So if you could take these words and convert a picture out of it and then work off of the picture, that'll help a lot too. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. A motorcycle is traveling 100 kilometers per hour. It's gonna be a rate problem. How far will it travel in two minutes? So I'm just gonna multiply that by two minutes. So I'm really multiplying one fraction by another fraction, but these units won't cancel. An hour and a minute can't cancel. So what I have to do is multiply it by another factor of one so that my minutes and hours will cancel. There are 60 minutes in one hour. And once I do that, I can see that now my units will cancel hours, will cancel with hours, minutes with minutes. And that'll leave my answer as far as units go in kilometers. And that's what I'm asked, how far Will they travel? Well, I want kilometers. I want my time to cancel out. I can use a calculator on this. Um, I'm going to see, can you see that? I'm going to just go multiply across the top. 100 times 2 equals divided by 60, and that gives me 3.3 .3 kilometers. And then my check is does that even make sense? Well, you know, you're traveling two minutes at 100 kilometers per hour. You'd expect it to be, um, you know, one thirtieth of a hundred, and that's about that right there. So that does make sense. Okay, let's take a look at number two here. Uh, Bill invests four thousand dollars at eight percent, compounded yearly. So that's important to note. So when you compound yearly, that means you earn interest on the interest. So you can take that four thousand times the eight percent you have to convert this to a decimal 0 0.08 so times 0 0.08 and that's going to give you four thousand times 0 0.08 is equal to 320 dollars so at the end of one year you make 320 in interest so at the end of one year you have four thousand three hundred and twenty dollars total and then you're going to make eight percent on that so you take that 4,320 and you multiply it again by 0.08 to see you're going to make 345.60 in interest. So you're going to make 320 the first year and then you earn interest on that interest. So you make 345.60 the second year. That's your total interest earned. What is that? 665.60 on top of the 4,000. So this is going to be 4665, 466560. There it is right there. Answer B. Okay. Number three, a waitress serves 10 tables one evening from 6 until 12. So she works for six hours. She makes 1050 per hour. So I'm probably going to end up taking the 
hourly rate times the hours. Her total bills for all the tables is 240.60 with an average of 12%. So I'm going to write that down, 0.12. How much did she make? Well, she made, I'm going to take the hourly rate times the hours. So she makes 1050 times the six hours, she makes $63 in wages. And then she makes tips on 240. So I take the amount of sales, 240.60, times that 0.12, and I get 28.87 in tips. So our hourly rate is 63, and then her tips are 28. So I'm going to add those two things together. You get 91.87, and there it is right there, answer C. Down to number four, 15 is what percent of 200? So that's saying 15 is what part of 200? I could do 15 divided by 200. 15 divided by 200, and I get 0.075. That's a decimal. To move it to a percent, I go over 1, 2, and it turns into 7.5%. Right there, answer A. I could see that 15 is to 200. Well, I could just cut that in half to say 100, and also see cut that in half to see 7.5%. Either way. Okay, turn in the page to number five. A boy is red. A boy has five red balls, three white balls, two yellow ones. What percent of the balls are yellow? So you got to figure out the total. So the total is 10. What percent are yellow? Well, it's going to be what you want over the total, 2 out of 10, or 20%. Number 6, add 10% of 300. 10% of 300. So I could just knock that over to get 30. So 0.1 times 300 is equal to 30. So take that and add it to 50% of 20 is 10. So 30 plus 10 gives you 40% right there. Convert 75% to a fraction. Well, the way I convert it to a decimal, I think of this thing as like a little arrow and it goes over 1, 2, is 0.75. So it's 0.75 is a decimal, or 0.75 to 1 or 75 to 100. And then I look up here. Um, that's actually here. This one doesn't make any sense. But this one also works, right? Uh, this is 3 quarters of a buck, or 3 fourths. So that one also works. And it's actually a better answer because it's reduced. Convert 90% to a fraction. That's 90 out of 100, or 9 out of 10. And that's right down here on answer D. All right, moving right along. Number nine, a man buys an item for $420 and has a balance of 3000 How much did he have before? So this is actually kind of decoding the math. I mean, sorry, decoding the English. A man buys an item for 420 and has a balance of 3000 So that means after, like how much is it, minus 420 to give me 3,000 afterwards. So it's not going to be 3,000 minus the 420, but what minus 420 gives you the 3,000? So 3420 minus 420 gives you the 3,000. All right, moving right along. Oops, I already did that page. Number 10, divide 960 by 3.2. You might be able to see that it's going to be equal to 3. You can do that on your calculator if you want. 960 divided by 3.2 and see it's 3. Or you could just see that 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9. So that's what gives you that answer there. Uh, here's an equation. What this is saying is x is equal to some number. Take that number and replace x with that number. So that x value goes right in there. 3 times that value of 7 plus 5 
minus 2. There's another x, so that 7 also goes in there. Then order of operations is multiplication before addition. So I do 21 plus 5 minus 14. 21 plus 5 is 26. Minus 14 is 12. So my answer is 12. The answer is actually 12. X isn't equal to 12. X is equal to 7. But your answer is 12. Number 12 here is saying solve for the square root of 121. What this thing means is what times itself equals that number. So the square root of 16 is equal to 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So the square root of 121 is 11. 11 times 11 is 121. You just have to know your multiplication tables to get that. Number 13 is the algebraic equation. The point here is to get this x right here all by itself. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to add 27 to both sides to start with. So they're going to add 27 to both sides. I do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides of the equation. That's going to leave me with 3x equals 27. Still trying to get this thing by itself. It's saying 3 times what equals 27. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 27 divided by 3, or 9. Answer C. And the last one right here, solve the following equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is distribute that 4 through this quantity. This 4 is times this whole thing, so I have to distribute this 4 through the quantity. So 4 times y is 4y. 4 times 6 is 24 is equal to 3y plus 30. Again, I want to do whatever I can on both sides to get that y by itself. So I'll subtract 3y from both sides. 4 of these minus 3 of these is one of them. I'll subtract 24 from both sides. 24 minus 24, those will cancel. 3y minus 3y cancels. 30 minus 24 is 6. So y is equal to 6. There's my answer right there. There's the second half of this test. I'll go over that. Um, do these problems first, and then watch how I do them. And I'll do the second half of this test in another video. I appreciate you watching. Uh, please comment below where you are on your entrance exam in iView. I'd like to hear what you're up to. And if you like the video, hit like. And think about subscribing. It's a practical math channel.